All right, so today what we're going to cover is the, um, it's going to be related to the ear. Uh, specifically, it's going to be all the uh, tuning fork tests. So today we're only going to look at the tuning fork test, which is a clinical test, uh, which allows you to differentiate uh, whether the patient has a conductive hearing loss, a sensory neuro hearing loss, or uh, even a mixed uh, hearing loss is sometimes possible. So um, let's first talk about uh, what is conductive hearing loss and what is sensory neuro hearing loss. So here we have um, the ears of a patient and then uh, here is the head, right? Um, now you have the, uh, for the ear, this is the outer ear right here. Then you have your uh, meatus here, which is the uh, tract here, the tympanic membrane. Uh, here are your ossicles that go like this, right? The state piece is the final one. And then this is going to go into the cochlea, and you have the vestibular apparatus right there. So this is just a general look uh, at it. Now, um, now before I continue, I'm going to um, let's do this real quick. I'm going to make a quick copy of this. I don't want to have to keep drawing this. Um, so. Okay, so I'm just made a copy of it right now, and so I'll keep using the same picture over and over again. So now, um, what is conductive hearing loss, and what is sensory neural? Uh, and also, I should add, there is, is the cranial nerve eight is right over there, uh, coming off the cochlea. So, conductive hearing loss is any hearing loss uh, which is going to be between the stapes and the outer ear. So this is going to be conductive. And so that includes the external ear, which is here. This part is the external ear. This is the middle ear. And this is the inner ear. So that includes the external ear and the middle ear. And sensory neural hearing loss is pretty much the cochlea and the cranial nerve. So this is just the cochlea and the cranial nerve 8. Um, and so using these tests, we can, um, using the tuning fork, we can differentiate whether the problem is in this area or in the sensory neural area or in the conductive area. So let's begin. Let's first talk about um, uh, the different types of conduction. So let me uh, go ahead and just paste that there. So we have two types of conduction. Uh, the first type is called air conduction. And the second type is called bone conduction. So how do you get uh, to how do you get to sense an air conduction? Well, the way to get an air conduction is you take the tuning fork, you you know tap it against your knee or your elbow, whatever you prefer, um, and you put it right outside the ear. So when you put it outside the ear. Uh, the waves are going to travel through the you know, tympanic membrane, hit the tympanic membrane, cause you know, vibration of the ossicles, and then it's going to get into the, uh, finally get into the cochlea. So the air conduction goes through the uh, conduction zone, the conduction area that we talked about, and the sensory neural area. Now, how do we elicit a bone conduction? Well, with the bone conduction, what you will do is you'll put it below the ear on the mastoid. Now, when you put it, uh, of course, first you uh, you know tap it, make sure it vibrates. Then you put it, uh, you know, behind the ear on the mastoid. And now, what it'll do is the patient will hear it, but he won't hear it through the tympanic membrane. He'll hear it directly through the bone and it'll directly activate the cochlea. So with bone conduction, you don't, you don't go to the conduction part. All you're getting is the sensory neural part. So bone conduction is only testing sensory neural while air conduction is testing both. Now, the way I like to think about it, it does help me a little bit, is I just think air, condu uh, air conduction only tests conduction and bone conduction only tests sensory neural. Now, in normal conditions, okay, in normal condi uh, conditions, 
your air conduction your air conduction okay your air conduction is about two times greater than your bone conduction so this is under um, normal conditions Okay, so if your air and, and this makes sense because obviously this is the you know this is the, this is the normal way that you hear. So normally you'd hear better through the uh, regular ear than through the bone. Um, now, what does it mean if we do this and your bone conduction is greater than your air conduction? Well, that means you're able to hear better through your bone than you can through your ear. And okay, well, first of all, it says that sensory neural is fine because you can hear, because uh, you're able to hear it through the bone. But if you're hearing it better than air conduction, then that means the problem is somewhere here. So if your bone conduction is greater than your air conduction, that means you have a problem in the conduction of your um, of the sound. Now, if your air conduction is greater than your bone conduction then that means it's either going to be normal or you have a sensory neural hearing loss. Because remember, bone conduction also requires sensory neural uh, activation. So if that's bad, then you know, b uh, both bone conduction air, air conduction will be lower, but uh, bone conduction still should be more lower than the air conduction. So pretty much the you know there's, there's two options that you can have I mean to really make this simple there's two options that you can have either air conduction could be uh, better or bone conduction could be better if air conduction could be better uh, we call this I'm just gonna erase this because I wrote there we, we call this a positive Rene test so if air conduction is better we call it a positive Rene test and if uh, bone conduction is better we call it a negative Rene test okay now um, so if the Rene test is negative then that means you diagnose a conduction problem but if it's positive either the patient is normal or there is a sensory neural issue now um, just general how do you do the Rene test I should, I should go over that first in the Rene test first you test for bone conduction so you put the tuning fork uh, behind the mastoid and then uh, you continue, continue to let it ring until he can't hear it. Then you move the um, fork to the outer ear. And you ask the patient if he can still hear it. If he can still hear it, then that means it's positive, Rene test, so it's either normal or sensory neural issue. But if he cannot hear it, then that means the bone conduction was better. And so then uh, that's a negative Rene test, and that means he has a conduction issue. Now, um, so that's kind of a uh, overview, I should have kind of mentioned it before, of the Rene test. Now, there's another tuning fork test, uh, which is done immediately after Rene, uh, which is called the Weber test. Now, how does the uh, Weber test, oh, real quick, sorry, we'll talk about one other thing. Um, if you have severe damage, if you have severe damage to your cochlea, this is severe, then you could get a false negative. Um, you know, uh, bone conduction greater than air conduction. So that's only if it's a very severe sensory neural damage. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's uh, pretty safe to go. So uh, now we can move on to the Weber test. So let me just get a quick printout here. So again, we have the head here. You have the uh, outer ear, middle ear, and the inner ear. Um, now, in this Weber's test, uh, what you do is you take the tuning fork, you strike it, make sure it's vibrating, and you put it on the top of the head. Now, if the patient is normal, then what will happen is um, the vibration will go to both ears. Actually, sorry, it won't go through the ear. It'll go straight. I should erase that it'll go straight to this uh, cochlea and I, I'll just draw this cochlea real quick and it'll go because remember we're not putting it at the ear so the Weber test is skipping the conduction zone and, and going straight to the sensory neural aspect of the um, test so in, in a normal situation 
there will be uh, both ears would be equal. Both he ears will hear it equally. In other words, there'll be no lateralization. Now, let's think about it. Um, if you have a sensory neural problem, okay, and let's just say for this example, uh, you have a sensory neural issue in the, uh, let's say that's the right ear. So you, you, your, your sensory uh, neural capacity is blocked. What's going to happen? Then will you hear it on the right hand side? Will you hear it? So this is the right and this is the left. Will you hear it on the right side? No, you're only going to hear it on the left side. So in this test, if there's a sensory neural issue, it's going to lateralize to the good ear. So not the ear that the patient is complaining of, but the opposite ear, whatever, whichever one that may be. And in this scenario, it's the left ear. Now, what if you have a conductive loss? If you have a conductive hearing loss, so you know um, the entire apparatus here, so it goes like that. So let's just say that um, you have a problem here. Well, well this is what's going to happen. Your, your sensory neural is working fine, right? So it will still come down. The, the signal will still come down and it will reach here but you'll hear it better on this side because you don't have noise coming from this side uh, clouding the, you know, uh, it's not competing with any information which, whereas this one, it is competing with the information coming from the outside air and on top. So in conductive hearing loss, it'll actually lateralize to the bad ear. And so this is a good way to differentiate um, that as well. Now, um, after this, there's uh, another test that occurs. This is called the absolute bone conduction. Uh, it's written short A, B, C. So absolute bone conduction. In this test, um, you do the bone conduction and you're comparing it. Uh, who are you comparing it to? Well, you're comparing um, the patient's, you know, the patient's bone conduction with the examiner's bone conduction. Um, but there's one little caveat here, which which is which is important, uh, and I'll make it in red here. The tragus, which is that little uh, tag that comes off of your ear, uh, must be occluded. So the ear must be occluded. In other words, you need to rule out any air conduction. So you got to cover up the ear. You got to block the ear so that uh, the patient can't hear. And what you do is um, you will do the bone conduction of the patient. Ask him when he can stop hearing it, and then you put it onto yourself if you're the examiner, and you will see if you can continue hearing it. Now, if um, if there is conductive hearing loss, then you both you, you, it'll be the same duration. So, and on, obviously, if it's normal, right, you guys should be both normal. So, if it's normal and conductive hearing loss, then it's same duration, but let's say you take it away from the patient you put it to your ears and you can still continue to hear it then that is a sensory neural hearing loss so in sensory neural hearing loss it is a shorter duration so you would actually uh, continue to hear it and therefore um, the patient's uh, ability to hear that is shorter so um, that is the ABC test now the slight variation very slight uh, is going to be the Schwabach test Schwabach test, you do the same thing with one slight difference. Um, the ear is not occluded. Now in this one, um, if, if it's the same duration, so if it's normal, it will be the same duration. Now, if it's sensory neuro, neural hearing loss, then it will be shorter just like the previous one. So there will be a shorter duration. So the patient will not be hearing as long as you will. But if there is conductive hearing loss, then it's actually longer. The patient will be hearing it longer than you. Uh, and so in this case, maybe you want to put it to yourself first and then ask the patient if he can continue to hear it. So let's do a recap um, on all the different tests because we kind of went through a few things here. So we have the Rene test. 
we had the Weber test, we had the absolute bone conduction, and the Schwabach. Okay, so now let's go through the normal findings. Um, the conductive hearing loss and what you can expect to find in sensory neural hearing loss. So in the normal findings for Rene, I don't like how I did that. So, so in the normal findings for Rene test, um, the absolute, um, the, uh, the air conduction is going to be greater than bone conduction. And remember, the same thing is for sensory neural hearing loss. So for both of them, uh, the air conduction is greater, and we call this a positive Rene. Both of these will be a positive Rene. But in the conductive hearing loss, the bone conduction is greater than air conduction. And this is a negative Rene. And if, if, if you remember, I said that, remember, air conduction is for the conduction, conductive hearing loss, and bone conduction is for the sensory neural hearing loss, or in this case, uh, normal as well. Now, let's talk about Weber now. In the normal case, there will be no lateralization so both he ears will hear it equally in conductive hearing loss it's going to lateralize to the bad ear because remember the bad ear the sensory neural still works and the weber only tests for the sensory neural but in sensory neural hearing loss it obviously the bad ear is not going to work so it's going to lateralize to the good ear now in absolute bone conduction whether you have normal or con uh, conductive hearing loss, it's you're going to have equal. You and the patient will both hear it at the same time. But in sensory neural hearing loss, it's going to be the patient will hear it at a much shorter duration. And that's the same for uh, absolute bone conduction and uh, Schwabach's test. Remember, Schwabach's is when you don't include the ear, and the absolute bone conduction is when you do occlude the ear. And so even with Schwabach's, you get equal. The only difference is with con uh, uh, conductive hearing loss, it'll actually be lengthened. So that's a quick review of the different tuning fork tests um, when, you're, uh, when you're looking for distinguishing uh, conductive hearing loss and sensory neural hearing loss.